those of you who saw on Twitter, I Twittered that Olaf and Edward were in the book. Okay. They are not. <laughs> because it was too big a plot for to be part of a book. It's its own book. Yeah. Which is the book I'm currently writing. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> by, 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 by chapter... By chapter 10, Olaf is on stage, and Edward is not. So that's why I, it was too big. Edward always makes a book bigger, always. Yes, he does. And you add Olaf, and the pages just proliferate. So uh, I don't know if Bernardo is going to be joining the gang. I don't think this book. I think it's just Olaf and Edward, and I think that's enough. Okay. That's enough extras for St. Louis. <laughs> uh, and um, we are, never mind. But so, th when you finish Bullet, you'll understand that there just wasn't room to do justice to Edward and Olaf. Because let's face it, Olaf has a limited shelf life in this series. Eventually, he's going to cross the line and we'll have to kill him. True. Thank you. <laughs> or maybe we won't, and that would surprise me more. So, um, I think we want Olaf to have as much on stage time as possible since I think he's limited to how long he's going to be among us. And, and here's another interesting thing. Now that I have more friends that are over six foot tall, six foot three, six foot whatever, Olaf is the tallest character I will do. And in, in one book, I have him at six six, which is Claudia's size. In another book, I have him, the tallest person I, she's, that Anita's never met. Dolph is six eight. So how the tall is he? <laughs> What, he's 6'10? He's like three inches away from seven feet? Dear God! <laughs> My friend who's 6'3 and is as fond of New Rocks as we are, I said, help me figure out how tall Olaf is when Anita's standing. He says, with or without heels on? I said, with and without. Give me both. And so we literally, he was going, well, if you're here on me. So we've actually, if he's 6'8, Anita will be here, his sternum, with no heels on. If he's closer to seven feet, she'll be at his fucking belly button. <laughs> so, I may just arbitrarily change his height. Because I don't know what to do with <laughs> how can you be tough? How can you be tough staring at someone's belly button? <laughs> it's it's too I don't know. Anyway, okay. Qu question. Sorry. No, that's all right. That's all right. Hi, Laurel. I'm Hi. Camille. Hi, Camille. Um, I've been a longtime reader of both series. I actually own all of them. The entire. Cool. And, and, oh, yes, very good investment. Anita Blake series and Mary. And the one thing that I love about Anita is that I've grown with her. I started reading the series in the 90s. And from then, is, as I grew, she grew, I grew. Through everything that I went through in my life, that's what I turned to. My question is, in regards to Mary's personality and Anita's, do you find that there's a little bit of yourself in both characters? Um, Anita is closer, closer. Anita and I are equally as stubborn. Um, we both have a tendency, or did, I've kind of grown out of it, she's growing out of it, of torturing ourselves for our choices. Self-torturing. The new doll comes with self-torturing behavior. <laughs> That's a lot of people in my series, isn't it? Guns uh, sold separately. Sold separately, <laughs> yes. yes. Um, Anita is, and I used to be more alike when I started the series, and then as I went on to write books and marry and have a child and small dogs and live in suburbia, and she ended up having the highest kill count outside of a war novel. <laughs> it made us diverge a little. Hello. Um, but one of the interesting things about doing the research for Anita was in researching real crime and talking to real police officers and talking to real people in the military and ex-military, it changed how I looked at everything. I've now done too much true crime research, especially the serial killer stuff, that will leave a stain on your mind. I now, I actually had a, a good friend who was a police officer who, who gave me the talk one day. He says, you can't live on yellow alert. You're gonna burn yourself out. He says, you're not a cop. He says, you write about it, but that's not what you are. You can't live like this. And he was right. Um, though, it is amusing if you know you're going to be doing research with police officers and you know if you get there first at the restaurant and you sit with the only chair with your back to the door. No, no, back, back away from the door. 
away from the door. So they have to sit with their back to something, an opening of some kind. It doesn't work. They'll all move their chairs. So it fans out around the table and nobody gets to eat. <laughs> I've only done that once and it was really fun. I won't do it again. I actually noticed that in St. Louis. I was in St. Louis a couple of months ago and I actually noticed that going into Denny's. Uh, you, a bunch of cops came in yeah. and they didn't sit by the way. It was, they were all yeah. out in the fan. Yeah, they do. <laughs> because as a police officer, you're always on call. You're always on duty. Um, Mary has actually helped me grow. She's helped me get over a lot of my own issues. Um, I didn't have a lot by that time, but I had, a, I had some, and she, she pushes my envelope. She and Anita both push my envelope, and they make me have to look at why I'm uncomfortable. And if there's not a good reason to be uncomfortable, then I'm not. I get over it. I get past it. Um, I, get, uh, I, get, I wouldn't have met all the people and had all the people tell me how much the books have meant to them and how it's helped them be in touch with who they really are. And that somehow what I write helps, helps other people feel okay to be weird, not normal. Because it is normal for me, for you. And so Anita is very much her own person. And she and I both help each other grow and change. And Mary, too, very much so. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi, Laurel. I'm Christine. And Hi, I Christine. have to say, Anita has become like my role model. I'm not sure if that's a good thing or not, considering the kill count. Oh, yes, it is. OK. Um, so I've been wondering, what is your take on the current state of vampire literature nowadays with like all the crappy stuff flooding the YA novel section? Um, I've been invited to write YA Anita novels and Mary novels. No, don't. I was originally approached. I was originally approached. They wanted me to do a tween age novel, which means 10 to 11. No. And I said, I can't behave myself for a book, even a short book. I can't possibly. And they said, well, well, we'll help you behave. And I said, but, but, in a, but if they read that and there's only one book, they'll want to read something else by me if they like the book. And then they're too young to go to my other. And they said, but they will buy your other novels. I said, but wait. They'll still be 11. And they said, they said, yeah. I was 13 when I started. Um, I called my agent up and I said, give them this message and give them to it exactly as I tell you. I am not a pedophile. <laughs> so, some of the other people who are writing the paranormal genre have written young adult series and left the kids, if they want to read more, they have to go to the more adult series. I don't approve. I write for grown-ups. If you're a grown-up, come read. If, you, if you're a grown-up at 11, come on board. But I don't know you, and I'm not going to chum for you. That made me angry. <laughs> um, I, Stephanie Myers is writing the books to the best of her ability. I will not stand up here and bitch about her. <laughs> she is writing the books she wants to write and making amazing amount of money doing it and the fact that I think it is a bad role model for women is my opinion 